this first balloon flight was in memory of my late husband, Richard Hackney. We were both, um, he was the former director of the Kentucky Space Grant Consortium. And uh, he and I both came here together with a NASA grant in 1972. And so we have literally been with NASA all of the careers. The major goal of the weather balloon was to have the students go through this NASA-like end-to-end process of designing, building, launching, receiving the data back, and now are analyzing it. So as far as that goes, that uh, is the major goal of it. For this balloon payload, it was about four weeks. We assembled the new group of students and went to NASA Ames in Mountain View, California for, again, an intensive week of planning, designing, and seeing what was going to be needed to build the payload. And then they returned to Kentucky and began putting the payload together. I've basically had my hands on the payload airframe and the airframe jacket. I built the airframe jacket from scratch. That was my position. There's two cameras on it that are taking pictures. Hopefully we'll see the curvature of the Earth from the high altitude that we're hoping to reach around 100,000 feet. The payload, of course, were the two cameras. There will be a camera on our orbital flight, so we wanted to get some experience, uh, again, using the cameras, getting the data down real time. Of course, there were specific goals in terms of skills that we wanted to see that we were developing and data that we wanted to recover. We have our first um, satellite, which has been completely developed and designed by the students that make up Kentucky Space. Uh, the various universities, which is in its final stages of development, uh, will be ready to ship in October, and we're hoping to see an orbital launch uh, in early 2009, which will be the first time that Kentucky will ever have its own satellite in orbit. And in fact, maybe the first time that a state has had its own satellite in orbit. It's, of course, important to us in Kentucky for the various Kentucky-centric sorts of things that we can do with this important to the students to give them the opportunity to be able to have the experience to put it on their resume to be able to get the kinds of jobs that they want to get to be able to start companies here in Kentucky to do the kinds of things that need to be done to make us a strong state and a strong nation we have live video feed of, of our whole entire tra our whole entire mission. Um, we have video currently uh, taping us right now as we inflate the balloon, as we prepare the payloads, and then once that, that's done, once we launch it, um, we'll actually switch the video feed over to a live feed from the payload itself. Um, you can go online to KentuckySpace.com and, and read our blog. You'll be able to view the video, and that's kind of the most important thing is we want to get our name, Kentucky Space, out there. Um, if people are interested in flying payloads, we can fly payloads for them. So we want to kind of want to get our name out there and, and let the whole community realize that there is some aerospace going on in Kentucky. If there are students interested in doing this kind of aerospace business, um, our consortium spans six universities. So we just want to get our name out there and put out the call. And if students are interested in aerospace, um, they can always join our consortium. Today we're also connecting what we're calling ProSats or PongSats. Uh, students, uh, the younger students and kids have what they've done is they cut open ping pong balls and they put different things such as mar marshmallows and bugs and seeds inside of them uh, and they hot glued them back together and uh, hooked those up to the balloon strings. We're going to launch those up into space and when they come back down the kids are going to get to look at them and see what happens to their experiments and get to play around with that. Uh, and we think that's a really good way to get the younger generation interested in space and what we're trying to do here that way when they grow up and they get out of high school and middle school and go into college careers and when, maybe when they get up here in our age and, they can be really interested as well. Well, 
you can't help but look in space and just you know be in awe and wonder of all the things that are out there and you know you see the the videos and the the images from the International Space Station where they're doing their spacewalks and you look out at the you know the images taken by NASA satellites of distant galaxies and you know you can't help but like I said be in awe of all that and in order to you know be a, even a small part of that is uh, worth any sacrifice and all the work that we put into it.